Joining me now is our next newsmaker, Surjit Bhalla, Executive Director for India at the International Monetary Fund. Really appreciate your time, Professor Bhalla. The RBI, in a report published in June, linked the precarious state of state finances to freebies, particularly the power subsidies. And last week, we have seen how the Supreme Court has entered this debate. Has the time come to stop freebies altogether? Look, I think maybe the time had come a long time ago. Um, freebies uh, do not have any place in a modern economy like ours and what we aspire to. Uh, recall that I think it was four or five years ago when AAP came to power again in Delhi and they brought in a free water supply uh, to everybody. Um, as long as you consume less than 274 liters a day. And I had got into that debate. I had written that this was the average consumption for all households. Now, why in the world would you give free power to rich households? Uh, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So I had said so then, and I say so again today. Okay. Uh, Professor Bhalla, I want to understand from you what, according to you, constitutes good and bad freebies and what are the economic rationale behind them and fiscal consequences? Or is this debate more political? First of all, a good freebie is a contradiction in terms, an oxymoron. Um, now, that doesn't mean that all subsidies uh, are bad. Um, if you have targeted subsidies, um, that is very good and efficient. Now, let me give you an example of what I think are targeted subsidies. Um, you know, for a very long time, I had been uh, a major critic of both the PDS and uh, the Narega program, jobs program. Now, <clears throat> recently, I wrote an article along with two others on saying how um, the PDS system had really helped India um, avoid uh, the crisis for the poor. Uh, the pandemic, its worst effects were contained by not only uh, providing those food subsidies, but also increasing them. Now, what changed? What changed was that the PDS system back in 2004, was reaching only 25% of the intended beneficiaries. And remember, at that time, everybody uh, could access the PDS system. So that's an example of a very bad, uh, non-targeted subsidy. In 2011, the targeting increased to 50%. Again, very bad. Um, now, starting in 2014, uh, with the new law, and regardless of whether uh, one agrees with the food security law or not, and we can discuss that, the targeting nevertheless increased in efficiency to something like 80 to 90%. Now we should debate, okay, so we've got the administrative setup to provide food to the needy. Now, the interesting debate now is, and uh, now that the crisis is over, should you provide food subsidies as via the PDS system, which involves a lot of inefficiencies, uh, or should you just provide, rather than to 75% of the population, which is what the PDS system or the food security law does, provide to the bottom 30%. You can double the amount of money uh, that mm. the poor uh, and still come out ahead. So right. in other mm. words, I can quite understand when supply constraints are there, you're not allowed to walk in the streets and so on and so forth to provide uh, food to the needy. But it is a bit of a stretch to think that 75% of the population are in need of food subsidies. Okay. And that 100% of the population, at least in Delhi, 
is in need of water, free water, not to mention free electricity and other such foods that are bound in the Indian landscape. Okay, then Professor Bhalla, how do you look at this argument that Prime Minister Kisan uh, Yojana, which gives rupees 1,000 a year to every farmer, is no different from Amadmi Party's electricity subsidy to the poor? Very good question. Look, the 6,000 rupees subsidy of income transfers, first of all, it is a more efficient form of subsidy than the uh, going through the, the food subsidy, in-kind subsidy. That's the first point. Second point, should all farmers be getting that uh, income transfer? No. Again, I think that started back in 2019. Uh, perhaps every government tries out things on an experimental basis. I think we now have reached a stage where the bureaucracy is very uh, efficient in targeting subsidies. We saw that with the food subsidies that I just that we just talked about. So I think we now should look at income transfers to the poor, and the poor are no longer defined to be the five percent of the population, which the Food Security Act defined it as that. But I would think somewhere around. 25%, a quarter of the population, and we do give them, whether they be farmers or non-farmers, we provide targeted income transfers to them. That is the way to go. So remember, <clears throat> what you want to do is to provide support to the bottom 25 and maybe the bottom third of the population. Okay. That's a political decision, but I don't think there is any reason for it to be more than a third. Then you decide on how much income support they need. Not in kind, just straight cash transfers. And that's a political decision, I agree. But the method of doing it is via uh, income transfers, not via in kind subsidies. Okay, uh, then PDS and Narega schemes, are these welfare schemes or not, according to you? Well, let's look at the PDS system in a historical context, and which has stayed the same, or the operation of that. Um, the idea was back in the 1970s that we should provide food to the poor. Hmm. And at that time, remember the poor population was much, much larger than now. Yes. And it made a lot of sense to provide support to the poor. I have always been completely in favor of such a policy. So we decided, <coughs> excuse me, to provide food to the poor, but we said, okay, now how do we provide food to the poor? We will mm -hmm. buy the food from the farmers. Okay, we'll buy the food from the farmers. Now, the farmers need a fertilizer. So we provide them with fertilizers. And then we will provide them with free electricity. Um, and all to provide food to the poor. Hmm. Now, what happened? In 1985, Rajiv Gandhi correctly said that only 15% of these food subsidies reached the poor. And I think he was being optimistic. So why not, listen, we identify the poor and we provide them with cash. We okay. provide them with income. Now, I would think that even at that time, targeting by this method was much better than targeting by the method that we adopt. Narega again, uh, you know, for a long time, Narega wasn't constructing any uh, useful infrastructure. Okay. Now, if we can have Narega construct useful infrastructure, and I think we now have mechanisms in place uh, to do that, then think of it as an employment program where you know people are hired to construct infrastructure, which is what I think 
is happening now, but they are reporters like you should go out and see whether infrastructure is indeed being constructed, how efficient is the Norega program. Mm -hmm. There's too much tendency in India throughout history. Yes. Oh, this is for the poor, so let's do it. Well, I think, you know, in this day and age, um, that argument is neither necessary nor sufficient. We okay. must provide information. Absolutely. But at least make it efficient and not broadly in kind unless there is a real emergency like we had in the pandemic. All right. Uh, Professor Bala, last question to you. There is this argument also that though growth lifted a large part of the population out of poverty, many in India still have a very hard life with limited opportunity. Will they not be impacted if this freebie is stopped? And particularly in the absence of a social security system and limited employment opportunities. You know, Mara, you are assuming that the freebies and all my discussion of the last 10 minutes or so, hmm. you're assuming that freebies just reach the poor. That is an assertion which is not grounded in facts. So please think of it that, look, you want to help the poor, absolutely a good idea. Hmm. Please tell me, how is a freebie like free electricity in Punjab helping the poor? Yes. Does that help the poor? Hmm. So it helps a poor farmer, but wouldn't the poor, but it helps the rich farmer a lot more. He's got a larger land. He's using more hmm. electricity for irrigation. Hmm. So please, a freebie is wrong politically, economically, etc. Targeted uh, expenditure is politically a better thing to do and economically a better thing to do. So, you know, I think it's an open and shut case. Um, there right. is an efficient way of redistributing income, which is after all what the whole discussion is about. And there is a very inefficient way of redistributing income. So we have chosen until recently the most inefficient way of redistributing income. Think about it. Why did no other poor country provide the massive uh, subsidies, food subsidies, we are the PD, for, for, through programs like the PDFs. You know, there are 190 countries in the world. What is so unique and what is it that we know more than all the 189 other countries? They all provide, everybody provides income for the bottom, for the bottom 25%. Income support. You have to do that. Societies have to do that. But they have methods by which you do. Efficient methods by which you, everybody is better off. Mm. So mm. that's the, the key point is to do Absolutely. it efficiently and to provide more income to the poor than with the alternative case of uh, in kind subsidies or freebies, as you call them. Yes, Professor Bhalla, that exactly is the need of the hour to have a constructive discussion and debate on this issue. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. That's all for